Hey everybody, this is Jim Neeb. Um, quite a few people ask me time uh, time uh, what exactly my process is for setting up my laser, uh, getting the Z height set and the X and the Y. So I'm going to show you. There's a lot. There's tons of different ways to do it, um, but I'm just going to show you how I typically do it. Um, so I'm going to go through. I'm working on another video here with this little piece of cherry, trying to do some deep engraved tests with my new XT8 laser. Um, and so I'm going to show you the process right here, how I uh, go about doing something like this typically with a little more detail than I usually do. So this piece of cherry, um, I'm just going to engrave the word cherry on here. I'm just doing some tests uh, of, of the laser, how deep it'll gra engrave and stuff and what kind of speeds and power levels I want to use. But I have designed the image I'm going to burn in here. Uh, with the center of it uh, being my X, Y, zero. So I put, I put a really light little X on there and that's what I'm going to use to set up my X and Y. And I've just placed it on top of uh, this piece of wood that I know is square to my X and Y directions. With the laser, there's no force obviously on the piece of wood and I've never had a problem with vibration moving it around so I don't actually bother to clamp down the workpiece. Um, it, it stays put. I've never had one like jiggle around even on a really large job so I just do it like this. Now I have on my laser this touch rod that is my uh, it, actually, I can set Y and X as well, but I typically only use it for Z. I have a software in my screen on Mach 4. I have a offset routine where I can plug in the X and Y offset between the nozzle and this rod. And so if I do an X, Y, Z touch, touch off with my touch plate, I can actually do an X and Y um, and Z all at once, but I don't really care about that kind of accuracy with the laser. Typically, I'm just burning something approximately in, in a spot here, and I don't care that it's, you know, three thousandths of an inch accurate like I do with sometimes with end mill work. So, typically what I do is I just set my Z with this. So, um, I have this little stop collar set such that when it's down and I lock this, it's at the, it's basically going to touch down and give me Z0 right at the optimum focus point. So I've characterized this laser um, and you can see it's, it's pretty level. It's, it leaves about a quarter inch gap and that's, that is my best focal point. So I can, based on that, I can just use the standard touch plate routine that comes with the Avid machine and I'll just do a Z touch off with that rod in there. So now my Z is set perfectly, which is very important with lasers because you need to have you need to have that set to get a good focus point. Now I'm going to set my X and Y and, and as I said I've got a small light X in the center there. So I'm going to turn on my laser. The fan's kind of loud on this, so I'll try to talk louder. So now with the laser on, I have hot keys on my keypad where I can turn the laser on at a very low power, so it's not going to burn anything, but it's still good to have your safety glasses on because it's pretty bright, especially this XT8. This is a 45-watt laser. So in this case, I'm Z'd up, at, so the spot is really large, but it doesn't matter. I'm just going to center it on my X there, and then turn off the laser. So that's positioned in my X and Y zero in the center of the workpiece, so all I have to do is go over to Mach 4 and hit zero for X and Y, and then that gives me X, Y, and Z all set up. and so. Now I'm ready to run the toolpath. So that's pretty simple. Sometimes um, I'll you know use the lower left corner of the workpiece, and again I'll just use the laser light and put half of the light on the edge, and 
you know, half on the other or over the edge, I should say. It's, it's just as easy to find the center as the corner with the laser turned on. And that's why, for me, I, I do it that way. Because with, with uh, one of these little portable keyboards and the hotkeys to turn the laser test fire on and off, it's, it's uh, just as fast as using a touch plate where you have to go back and do a, you know, an a offset afterwards with that. Here, it's, I'm going back anyway, so I hit X and Y, Z to um, zero it out and I'm ready to run so and then in this case I would put my uh, my my uh, little safety screen back on if I was gonna run it but I'm doing some videoing for for some other video so I'm not I'm gonna leave it off so it's visible but that's it it's pretty simple um, these are really uh, really nice to have with the laser uh, you a lot of the lasers do have a conductive tip so you can also use the tip for Z, but you can't use the tip for X and Y on this one because it has kind of a conical shape, so it wouldn't pick up these edges accurately. Oh, and if, if you're wondering why I didn't have to hook this up here, is I leave my magnet for my ground connected over on the chassis ground, uh, and my laser is connected electrically to chassis ground, so that makes the connection all the way through that way so I only have to put the base out here to use so um, that's about it if you have any questions throw them down in the comments and I'll be sure to answer them thank you